Calvin, can you hear us? How are you? Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Fresh off uh, attending Trump's rallies, I'm I'm sure. How <laughs> how are things over in the states in in Michigan? It's amazing. I've just come from a, a watch party with the GOP. Um, there's a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm. I'm feeling optimistic personally. Um, my church, which I'm in right now, was a polling center today. It's closed already. It's I mean, it's crazy to me that they closed so early. I think they closed about eight p.m. So. How they give people enough time to vote, I don't know. Um, locally, it's not looking great so far. I'm looking at the votes. Not many have been reported, but the ones that have been reported are for Kamala. So we'll see what happens here. But uh, you know, nationwide, things are looking good. Was, was it mainly young men in the, the line down at your church? Or no? This is the problem. We've seen, so I'm in the rectory across from the church. I've seen women coming all day. Um, this is why universal suffrage is a mistake. They always vote yes. liberal against them. You know, Kamala put out this statement, vote against your husband, don't vote for Trump. It's like, this is the problem. They're pitting husband against wife. It's demonic. Re revoke, article, uh, revoke, revoke Amendment 19. Universal suffrage is a mistake. <laughs> what, what are you laughing for? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, your flock is... You guys are still in the UK. I forget you guys don't have freedom of speech, so you can't agree with me. <laughs> yeah. But I know in your hearts you do. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we can't agree too hard, otherwise we'd be arrested. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you, you ran into Trump recently, didn't you? How, how was that little encounter? Yeah, I was there last night. It was, it was amazing. Um, the last, uh, providentially, the last rally that he had was here in my town, in Grand Rapids, in my parish. And so we went along to that. Um, I mean, it was a massive stadium. It was full. There was like a single seat empty in the place, and the vibe was electric. So we had, they start with the prayer. They, then they have the Pledge of Allegiance. So everyone's looking at the flag and saying, look, it doesn't matter what religion you are, what race you are, whatever. We're all united under this flag, which was powerful. And then they had the national anthem with a bit of patriotism, a bit of nationalism, American pride. I'm like, why don't we have this at our rallies? Well, we know why. Um, but the whole place was was vibing. And then, of course, Trump comes out, does a, does a little jig, and then gets on stage and just speaks off script for a few hours. And we were there from goodness knows what time until about half two in the morning he didn't stop speaking until gone half two and so i don't know how he has the energy because he'd been to three other rallies that day and this was the last one he's 78 years old for goodness sake it's crazy um and so he just got everyone excited everyone enthusiastic and then when he'd left uh, I was very fortunate enough to have a little tour backstage. And so I went into his, his locker room and stole his Tic Tacs. And uh, <laughs> someone grabbed me his, uh, from the podium. Someone grabbed me his towel from the podium. So I'm going to try and get him to sign that and frame that. Because it, it felt like such a historic moment. It felt like we were living through history. You know, you get those, those pinnacle milestones throughout your life. And this was one of them. This is like, this. we're at the turning point of not just America, but the whole of the West. And we were there for, for it. It was, it was fantastic. Calvin, you said recently during your speech about um, how Christ isn't on the ballot box, but Jezebel is. And then you start to see other commentators take uh, your line. Uh, obviously, we had a brief exchange about this privately. Um, have you got any more thoughts about, um, about obviously, other people now sort of, not trademarking it, of course, because it's yours, but, um, yeah, people taking that line? Yeah, honestly, if it helps, that's all that matters. The whole point that, so that Trump rally that I was speaking at, the whole point of that, I was invited first and foremost just to pray for Trump. But then they said, okay, well, we'll let you speak. We'll only give you three minutes, but give a warning to the states. So the whole point of me being there was to warn Americans of what's to come if they don't vote the right way. And to say, look, look how crappy things are in the United Kingdom right now because we let the Labour Party in. And even before that, we've had conservatives in name only for the last 14 years. Um, and this is what the country is becoming. You've got people being arrested for silent prayer. We've got mass infanticide. We've got people being arrested for Facebook posts and, and retweeting, not even tweeting things. It's just insane. We don't have any freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, freedom of association, none of it. And so I, I gave them a warning. And so I did end with the message, you know, that Jesus Christ is not on the ballot box, but the Jezebel is. You know what to do. And that was to say, get out there and vote. Christians... If every Christian in America voted, the election would go their way every single time. But the vast majority of them don't vote because they think it's beneath them somehow. It's like, well, you know, render unto Caesar. But that's a misunderstanding of the scriptures. 
we are to shape the here and now in in God's good design, in God's order of what's good and evil. If we think something's evil, which clearly when there's a democratic party that's in favor of death, mass death and against free speech, then we should vote against that. But there's this whole idea that, well, you know, Trump's a bit of misogynist, a bit of racist, a bit of this and that. He's not a perfect man. Like, there's only been one perfect man. That's Jesus Christ. If you're waiting for him to come, you're going to be waiting a quite well. It depends on different takes of Revelation. But you're waiting a while, right? So, so he's not on the ballot paper, but she is. Vote against her, even if you can't vote for him, was the message. And I'm hoping that it goes down. If Charlie Kirk, I love Charlie Kirk, by the way, if he wants to go out and use that phrase, great. If everyone else wants to use that phrase, fantastic. As long as it, the message gets home of you guys have got to get off your butts and Christians get out there and vote. You can become a block vote. You can create this country and, and shape this country in your in whatever way you see fit. Christian nationalism could become a thing. America could be properly Christian if you want it to be, but you've got to do something about it. And if those who are waiting for God to perform a miracle are forgetting that God works through people, like he is active in his creation, he's expecting you to get out there and vote. So do it. To add to that, I've seen pastors within America post online that they're not, uh, some of them aren't voting for Trump because he's not... um, he's not anti-abortion enough uh, and a lot of them are writing not kamala harris but other people as well ben and it's been did this as yes well. yes uh, do you have a take on that yeah it's just foolishness lewis honestly um what trump did is he secured a solid supreme court and so that abortion was removed from the federal level down to the state and that meant that states can once again ban infanticide they can ban the killing of unborn children. They can ban the killing of, of vulnerable, innocent lives. And they can they can change legislation to protect the sanctity of life and remind people that we are made in the image of God, and that's a good thing. So he's already made a massive difference and saved th- th- tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives in the short time that that Roe v. Wade legislation was removed, thanks to Don. And so he's already done more pro-life than any other president in, in modern history. And so... I personally would like him to be more pro-life. I would like him to say, actually, just ban abortion on a federal level. But that's unconstitutional. And this is a constitutional republic. So it actually wouldn't be a, the right thing, thing for him to do. Um, one of the Trump events I was at, he actually got pretty much chastised for this. He was a, uh, it was a turning, pa- turning Point USA Faith Summit. And um, he said, look, I mean, the crowd were all roaring along with him. You know, he, he gets people energetic and they were loving him. But then he said... I agree with abortion in some exceptions. I think he said rape and incest, which is a very common thing. It's wrong, but it's common. And he got booed. It's the first time I've seen him get booed by his own audience. And you can see he was taken back by it. It's like, whoa, this is my core, and they're not liking this. And I think that was important because they made it clear that Christians and conservatives are pro-life. And if you're not pro-life, you need to address that. And so he does need to address that issue. But let's not forget... You know, rape and incest account for 1% or 1.5 at most of abortions. So of the millions of abortions that happen every year, it's not even due to them. It's it's convenience, it's it's just debauchery, depravity, and people just being wicked and not giving a damn about life. But yes, he can do better. And and But the thing is, he's surrounded by Christians. I'm there praying for him and blessing him. Other pastors are there around him. Uh, And so he has that impact. He has that influence where Kamala does not. She, I don't know who she has around her, but where I am in Michigan, her representative, Gretchen Witch, Witcher, or Witch, whatever her name is, was there performing a fake Eucharist, giving out Doritos in some weird pseudo homoerotic thing. It's like it's literally demonic. So it's quite clear the difference between the Dems and the Republicans. Well, you, so you, people who. Go on. So I was going to say, you even had the, the person sh- sh- shouting, uh, Christ is Lord, at Kamala Harris's. Uh, rally, and then she said, "I think you're at the wrong rally." So she's <laughs> kind of, uh, wow. yeah. So I think There's she's, Wisconsin, yeah. yeah. So she oh. kind of have said, or well, it shows exactly where she stands. Well, she had loads of abortion doctors up on stage at one point, and then I remember someone fainted in the crowd. And, and unlike in a Trump rally, when people will sort of sing songs and pray and wait for them to get better until Trump continues speaking, all the abortion doctors just kept speaking. So you've literally got all the doctors on stage, mm. and not one of them decides to go and help. Mm, it's funny that. Isn't yeah. it? Something about that. Last night, someone was down on the floor, and Trump stopped his speech, and he said, "Is everything okay there?" 
Like mm-hmm. this, just, just just human. It's not anything special about him. This is what any of any of you guys would do. Any of us would do. But there's something about the, the left that is is there's a disconnect from humanity. It's just there's something wicked going on. So we have to fight against it for obvious reasons. Well, well, let me jump in with a quick um, update on things about what the actual feedback to the things that you're talking about are. Poly market has now gone 90% for Trump. Wow. Uh, and, and that's still rising. New, New, York, New York Times, 79% chance of a Trump victory. Um, Bitcoin has made a new all-time high. The DXY, which is basically the dollar, um, is, is pumping. It looks like this is in the bag. Those words scare me. Because <laughs> yeah, you never know. The cock you cock never cock know. Cock. It's 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 not four a.m. in in United States yet. So yeah, yeah. Oh, Knockwoods. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I hate being so confident. Right? Yeah, but everything I'm looking at tell, is telling me that you know this is done. I hope so. It's ten o'clock here. A lot of police stations closed only two hours ago, so it's very very early days, and they've got a lot of time to cheat. You know, when we all go to bed, <laughs> that's when it happens. I, I, I you laugh, but it does. I've been speaking to people on the ground. You know, around here, for example, there were 17 precincts where there were more voters than there are citizens yeah. registered to vote. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's been people from other nations coming into the United States, going to different swing states, and voting with like a French or a Chinese passport. So, I mean, that's just mad. It's mad. Yeah, that's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Our Absolutely friend Callum Smiles went down to California to try see if he could do. Oh it. yeah, yeah, he did. Say. <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. Lewis, why Actually, one more. What, 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 the election? Uh, yeah, I just got bored speaking to Democrats, mate. I, I wanted <laughs> to come home. I wanted to come home. So, right. yeah, my time was up. <laughs> let, let me throw one more quick thing. The, bec- the betting markets now have Trump favourite to win the popular vote. Oh, well, I did, I, did, I did notice that as well. Um, obviously, Joe Biden, the most popular president in American history uh, and all that, um, he, he won, what, 88 million votes? Uh, Trump blown past that already. So, positive sign. I, I, but as you know, Connor, the, the popular vote doesn't really matter. Um, they've, they've got to get those, those seats, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. So uh, there's still time for them to cheat, is what I'm saying. Mm. It is, but if but if he wins the popular vote, it undermines a lot of their narrative. I mean, the, if if he wins the popular vote and he wins what is looking like something like 280 something electoral college votes, the left yeah. does not have an argument left. You know that that is that is their whole we stock. Don't care. And we we keep thinking they care about this kind of stuff. They don't care if they have an argument. If they can cheat, they will cheat. They don't care if it looks fair, if it looks right. They they'll get away with it because yeah. they'll be in power. Well, the whole thing is, is too big to rig, and we might have that. Good. Quick, quick, quick question about the churches in your area, by the way, Calvin. So when I went to um, Boston, I noticed there were a bunch of, uh, let's say, minor Protestant denominations that had a lot of pride flags and BLM yard signs. Do you get much of that in, in Michigan, or is it? Yeah. The church, the nearest church to me, well... One of the nearest churches to me has the gay flag outside. I'm, I can't say it on air because they're not getting trouble. But yeah, it has the uh, the trans pride flag outside. But I mean, this is helpful because people f- come here instead. Our congregation size has doubled in the month that I've been here because people want sound doctrine, they want sound teaching, and when they look around them, all they get is gay this, gay that. It's like, where are you going to go? All they're getting is gay. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been reading the Orthodox Bible recently. <laughs> yeah, I've, it's the one we all the DLC. <laughs> <laughs> It took me a while to get through the prologue because the first half of the book, book is just sort of like, so how did we happen? Well, there was this guy called the fucking Pope. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like him very much. <laughs> Neither do most Catholics in the moment. To be fair, yeah, to yeah, be yeah, fair, yeah, 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 yeah. He's on the room with the trans flag as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there are Marxists everywhere these days, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he, he came out and said, um, Catholics must vote for the lesser of two evils. One kills babies, and the other one returns migrants back to South America. So it's a really difficult... It's like... Sorry, you know, Guatemala is not, despite all appearances, the seventh circle of hell. So returning them home is not necessarily a death sentence. I think that might be a slightly easy one for answers. Doesn't the Vatican have walls as well? Yeah, funny that. Yeah. 
I mean, leave it's an right? So knock, knock the walls down and take some immigrants in, and then lecture us on your on your morality. It's, it's ridiculous. Mm. But I mean, the, the choice is clear. One is death, and one is not. As simple as. Mm. Fantastic. Well, uh, how are you planning to spend the rest of uh, election night? Are you gonna are you gonna turn in for an early one and hope to wake up to to not uh, an L shaped graph? <laughs> <laughs> I might go back down to the Republican watch party. I've got a scotch over there waiting for me. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Last night was a late one at the Trump rally. I mean, we got home about 4 a.m. at the end of it. But uh, it's, this is a once in a lifetime thing, isn't it? It really is. So I might stay up and see what happens. And, and the thing is, last time around, it was when people went to bed that the cheating happened. They, they found all these ballots at, what, 2 a.m., right? And so I think this time around, the Republicans are prepared. And the ones that I've been speaking to, they've got people out watching. I mean, even that's not enough. Here in Michigan, last time around, um, the Democrats closed the blinds and didn't let the watchers yeah, in yeah, to the count. That was this. Was when they, that was when they were sticking all the signs yeah. up on the window. Oh, bits of yeah, cardboard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Everyone's seeing it. Yeah. What I mean. They don't care. They do not care. It's insane. They can get away with in But yeah, this is local. So I think people are doubling down and extra cautious this time and doing everything they can to, to keep an eye on the cheaters. So they li- they'll limit the cheating. Excellent. Well, we've uh, we've got another guest waiting in the wings that I'm sure we'll cut in momentarily. But Calvin, thank you very much for your time, sir. I look forward to when you come back and visit us in, in our rainy little aisle. But until then, uh, enjoy the hopeful victory party. God bless you all and God bless America. Likewise. Thank you, Calvin. God bless my friend.